Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how to get over three common hurdles when you're trying to hear yourself in your headphones when you're recording into Logic Pro. Let me ask you, have you ever experienced one of these three scenarios? Number one, you put on your headphones, you're ready to sing into a microphone, play an instrument, you see a healthy level in Logic Pro, but you don't hear anything in your headphones. Or number two, you hear yourself in your headphones, but you hear two of you in your headphones. So very distracting. Or number three, you only hear one of yourself. You hear yourself, but there's a massive delay when you sing or play to the sound that you hear in your head. All three of these are very common. And today I want to show you how to get over all three of these plus a little extra. Okay, we're going to assume that you're working from a blank slate. You have an empty project in front of you. You have an idea. You just need to record it into Logic Pro and you need to be able to hear yourself in the process. So first things first, we're going to go to Logic Pro, go to Preferences, Audio. And the two most important details right now are the input device and the output device. These typically will be the same device. They'll probably both be the same audio interface or USB microphone or even the built-in microphone and output speakers on your Mac. Either way, you'd want to select that device in these two fields. So in my case, I have an interface. I'm using the Symphony desktop and this microphone is plugged into that interface right next to me. So I'm going to select that as the input device and the output device. So once you select your devices, you would click apply. There is another important detail, but we'll get to that. And let's just close this preference window. Let's now open the mixer. And you can do this either using key command X or this button right up here. And I'm going to record enable the track either here in the main tracks area or down here in the mixer. And we can see instantly that my voice is being fed to Logic Pro. And how we went about this is that I made sure to set the input of this track and channel strip to the first input on my interface. So right here in the inspector, which you can see by clicking this button or the mixer, there's a field for input and we've selected the first input. And once you record enable, your voice or instrument or whatever will be immediately fed to Logic Pro. And at this point, you're ready to hit record and start recording. But of course, the problem is if you don't hear yourself in your headphones, this is of no value to you whatsoever. So let's turn this off for right now. We have two different ways we can go about hearing ourselves in our headphones. And the first way we're going to go outside of Logic Pro. Most audio interfaces and devices probably offered you a piece of software to download when you registered the device online with the developer or manufacturer. And this piece of software typically is a separate software mixer to allow you to be able to hear yourself without any sort of delay or latency when you're recording. It's a separate mixer outside of Logic Pro. And in this case, with my Symphony desktop, I have exactly that. So we're gonna go to that separate piece of software. I should point out though that there are many interfaces now that are on the cheaper end that kind of just avoid this whole software mixer situation and just offer you a button that you can turn on and off for direct monitoring. But for many of us, maybe your interface is a little more complicated. And when you open that software mixer that came with the interface that you downloaded, it looks a lot like this. You have a lot of faders, you have a lot of buttons, and it's just overwhelming. Well, typically an interface is going to offer you a software mixer separate from Logic so you can hear yourself in your headphones without any delay. And it probably is just a bunch of faders. And when I turn this fader up for the Mixer 1 tab for the Symphony desktop, you can see on Mixer Master to the right, look at that. Now we can see my voice is being fed through the software mixer to the headphones, to the speakers, etc. And with the Symphony desktop, I have you know, many more options for choosing how I want to hear myself. In this case, I would select a direct mixer specific to the headphone output. So now we can see my voice is passing through the first channel to the mixer directly to the headphones. But for most, it's probably just going to be a fader that you turn up. Okay, cool. So now we can hear ourselves. And when we record, we'll be in great shape. We can hear ourselves with the song in time, no delay, perfect. For most folks, that's going to be enough because a software mixer in Logic Pro can be a little complicating. 
The reason you would choose this option is that you just want to keep things simple. You don't want to have any sort of delay or latency. Why you might not want to choose this option is twofold. Number one, you have a separate mixer application outside of Logic Pro that you got to juggle now with Logic Pro, which can be sort of distracting and you know overly complicated. Number two, if you want to use any sort of processing on your voice like EQ or compression, you're not going to hear your voice through that EQ or compression because we're not listening to our voice or our instrument through Logic Pro. We're listening to it through the interface to the headphones directly. This brings us to our next option for monitoring ourselves as we record. And that option is called software monitoring, which exists in Logic Pro. Typically, you'll see what looks like a speaker in the control bar. If you don't see this button, you can right click or hold control and click anywhere in the control bar and go to customize control bar and display in the pop-up menu. And you can enable under modes and functions, software monitoring. So now we can see that buttons are being added or subtracted from the control bar. We can also go to Logic Pro preferences under audio and go to general. And there we have it, software monitoring. So now if I enable this option, you're going to see the button turn green. You're going to see the option here on the preferences enabled. And you're going to hear a couple things in just a moment. If I now record enable or input monitoring enable the track or channel strip, check it out. Okay, so, so we're, we're listening, listening to, to my, my voice. voice. And, and we, we can, can see, see it in Logic, Logic Pro. Pro. Now, what you probably just experienced was twofold. Number one, you heard two of me, which is very disconcerting. Number two, there's a massive delay in one of the voices, which is very distracting, makes it impossible to record. Let's deal with the first situation. The reason we hear two of my voice and not just one in that scenario is because now we're listening to our voice in two different playback systems the direct monitoring from the interface and the software monitoring through Logic Pro. So we got to go back to that separate software mixer and turn the fader all the way down on that channel strip. Or if you have a USB microphone or something like the Scarlett where you just have a button for direct monitoring, just press it to turn it off. All right, so now we have to deal with the delay. And if we go back to Logic Pro, preferences under audio, we have this option called the IO buffer size. The smaller the buffer size, if you click here, the less latency there is in the monitoring path, which is great when you're trying to record. The larger the buffer size, the more latency, but the more your Mac can do all at the same time. So if you have a big project with lots of tracks, lots of instruments, lots of plugins, and you're running into the same pop-up over and over again, system overload, that's how you manage, that's one way you manage system overloads is to set the buffer size to the biggest option. And then we kind of have all these numbers in between. Obviously, we're trying to record ourselves through our headphones without a delay. So wouldn't we choose the smallest buffer size? Well, we would try, but typically this doesn't work out very well because the smaller the buffer size, the more your Mac starts to strain under the weight of all the stuff it has to do. And you'll run into, again, system overloads or popping and clicking and popping and clicking in the recorded audio when you stop recording. It's just everything can't keep up with the amount of stuff that needs to happen all at that time. So in that case, you start choosing a bigger and bigger buffer size where you're not getting pops and clicks. You're not running into system overloads, but you're not hearing that delay or latency in your headphones. You know, you have to choose what is most comfortable and appropriate for you in that situation. I typically use 128. When it comes to vocals, even 128 samples can be a little much. So I just use the direct monitoring from the interface. But, you know, you play with the numbers and you see what works best for you. And then you hit apply. Logic will update the core audio driver to that buffer size with that sample. And then you hit record and you see, you know, does it reduce the latency enough where you're comfortable and you can record without any problems? I'm going to leave the direct signal in just so you can hear that that delay has been reduced dramatically. So if we record enable. And now, and now we, we listen, listen to my voice, voice through both the software, software mixer, mixer and, and the direct, direct signal. signal. There's, there's way, way less, less delay. delay. It's a juggling act. But the benefits of this software mixer is number one, you don't have to deal with that separate software mixer of your interface. You don't have to flip between two different windows. Number two, if you want to enable any sort of EQ or compression, let's just turn some of this on. 
and we'll reduce this and we'll add a reverb just so you can hear my voice being processed through all this. There, there we have, have it. it. Here, Here we, we go. go. Cool. So you can hear that your voice will be processed through those plugins in Logic Pro as you record and when you listen back as well. The only other issue is if you're trying to record into a massive project with a lot of tracks, a lot of plugins, a lot going on, or you have a lot of latency inducing plugins in the monitoring path on the track or channel strip you're trying to record to. So what I mean by that is let's get rid of space designer here. And if we enable or open the adaptive limiter and set the look ahead to like 110 milliseconds, let's take a listen when I record enable my voice again. Okay, so we're listening. And we hear, again, there's a delay in my voice. And what the issue is, is with the adaptive limiter, we have basically introduced over 100 milliseconds of delay in the monitoring path. And there are many plugins out there that can introduce this sort of delay when you use them. And Logic compensates for this automatically, but when you're trying to record, you know, it can't really compensate for that in a way that you don't have a delay in your headphones again. So in that case, you would enable an option called low latency monitoring mode, which is another button here in the control bar that looks like a speedometer or a clock. Again, if you hold control or right click, and go to customize control bar and display, we have low latency monitoring mode right here. So now if we enable this option and go back down to the record enable button, we're gonna hear that delay has been removed. And, and here, we, here are. we are. So that would be your option for trying to reduce that delay in a busy project or with lots going on. Two other things is, number one, you have two options for hearing yourself through Logic Pro Software Monitor. You can record enable the track or you can just input enable the track. So input monitoring is right here and you can see and hear my voice. And this is your option if you just wanna hear yourself through Logic Pro, but you're not trying to record, you're just trying to rehearse or play along with the project so you can come up with ideas. That's your option. Or you could just record enable all the time. And lastly, one of my favorite things in Logic Pro is auto input monitoring. And this option, when enabled, again, in the control bar, when you press play and you're listening to your project, and if you have someone you know plugged in to a microphone or into the interface, you don't hear them while you're trying to listen back to the project. When you hit play, the monitoring through that channel strip and track is turned off. This is great for over-eager players that like to play along or, you know, just can't sit still. You just hit play and they disappear from the monitoring path so you can just listen to the project. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, YLogic Per Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicPerRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.